Every day we are bombarded with content and craziness in our world, politics, news, entertainment industry. It's coming at us fast and furiously. And as followers of Jesus, the question is, do we need to know about everything? Do we need to be aware and informed or is it all just a distraction and instead we should just be preaching Christ and him crucified? Let's find out. What's up guys, this is Ben from Provoke and Inspire and this is another quick hit episode where I take something from culture or from the news and I ask the question, what would Jesus think and what would Jesus do? all under the heading of how can we be faithful to him outside of the church. If you enjoy this content, please consider sharing it with someone. Uh, let them know. Uh, otherwise, leave us a rating and or a review, depending on where you consume this content. All right, let's do it. Little Nas X is at it again. Late last week, he released his new single, J Christ. The song and accompanying music video features a modern day depiction of Noah's flood and a scene where Little Nas X himself is nailed to a cross. Notable lyrics include, back, back, back up out of the gravesite, B, I'm back like J Christ, I'm finna get the gays hyped, I'm finna take it yay high. Now, the video is very homoerotic and frankly bizarre, and its reinterpretation of biblical imagery is at best distasteful and truthfully, it's just outright blasphemous. But if you are aware of his past antics, this isn't exactly shocking. In 2019, Little Nas X released a video for a single, Montero, which used CGI to depict him descending into hell and giving Satan a lap dance. As of January 2024, this video has amassed over 560 million views. Now, at the very second that I'm recording this, a bunch of Christian bloggers, YouTubers, and internet influencers are clamoring to share their instant reaction. And I guess to some degree, I'm doing it too. Now, in the middle of all this outrage, and don't think Little Nas didn't count on it, a more fundamental question kept going around in my head. Do followers of Jesus need to be like TMZ? Always up on the latest gossip and the news, always reacting to the latest stunts and antics in the world today. Now, maybe you chuckle and you think, I don't care about this quote unquote art produced by some pop star I've barely heard of. Okay, fair enough, but do you care about mainstream news or national or local politics? Let's face it, we're all drawn to different facets of culture and society. And I think it's worth asking, where's the line between informed and distracted? As followers of Jesus, our primary role is to make disciples of all nations. So the question is, how do we do that best? On the one hand, I wanna be like the Apostle Paul who said, for I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Christ, the one who was crucified. 1 Corinthians 2, 2. But on the other hand, I don't want to become so detached and isolated from culture and what's happening around me that I simply become irrelevant. Who wants to be the person who's answering questions no one is asking or who is speaking in a language that nobody understands? The only thing worse than preaching to the choir is preaching to no one at all. Now, despite his hyperbolic declaration to the Corinthians, Paul clearly knew more than just Christ and him crucified. He was a student of culture and was well aware of his day's theology, philosophy, and politics. He didn't have Twitter or X, uh, but he intimately understood Athenian culture. He studied their love of religion and debate and leveraged his knowledge to communicate the gospel effectively. Jesus also knew all of the hot topic issues of his day, as proven by his interactions with the Samaritan woman, the Pharisees, and the tax collectors. Inspired by their example, C.S. Lewis, Martin Lloyd-Jones, Francis Schaeffer, and Tim Keller, among many others, demonstrated a brilliant balance of devotion to the gospel with a profound understanding of current events and the modern mindset. So if total cultural ignorance is not the answer, but neither is blindly chasing down every trending moment, what is the biblical balance we should aim for? Well, let me give three quick thoughts for how we can find that balance. Step one, have the right motive. Whether we avoid all non-gospel noise or are up on the latest news, the foundation for our strategy to reach people has to be the same, love. Paul warns that if I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. 1 Corinthians 13, 1. Everything we do needs to be fueled by God's power and motivated by his love. You can ruthlessly focus on preaching nothing but the gospel, but if you don't care about people, 
it will be cold and ineffective. Likewise, you can speak eloquently about every issue and trend and storyline and even masterfully weave the gospel into those topics. But again, without a broken heart, it will accomplish nothing. Number two, seek understanding. This may be a tough, ego-killing pill to swallow, but the world is not waiting for my opinion on everything. Certainly, what it doesn't need is more knee-jerk, thoughtless commentary. Proverbs 18.2 perfectly captures the majority of commentary today. It says, fools have no interest in understanding. They only want to air their own opinions. What we need today is more thoughtful, biblical wisdom to help us navigate the increasingly dark times that we're living in. But this requires understanding. And understanding requires patience. Patience to learn, reflect, and measure our response. Finally, and yes, most importantly, we need to preach Christ and Him crucified. The only hope for the world is Jesus. It doesn't matter the issue or conflict or challenge. The core problem is sin. Lasting change only comes from preaching the gospel. If you want to end poverty, preach the gospel. Laws and programs cannot rid the human heart of greed, laziness, and selfishness, which are the greatest causes of socioeconomic disparity. Only Jesus can cure the underlying sin in this world. Do you want to end the sex trade? Preach the gospel. Only the power of God will cure the insatiable lust of our culture, which creates the demands that allows the sex trade to exist. Only the power of God will awaken the apathy of those who should be fighting to end it. Look, I'm not trying to oversimplify evil and the suffering in our world. Injustice and abuse are rampant and we need to do something about it. But too often we focus on the symptoms and ignore the root cause. There is no hope apart from Jesus. Little Nas X's use of religious imagery is offensive. But what do we expect? Our job is to share Jesus with the world. To do this, we will need a broken heart for the lost, a total dependence on the Holy Spirit, an intimate understanding of the people we're trying to reach, and an unashamed declaration of the cross. None of it is expendable, so let's embrace it all and let's get to work. All right, well, that was it for Provoke and Inspire Quick Hit. I uh, hope this helps you wrestle through how you should interact with culture. What are the things you should focus on? How can you preach Christ and Him crucified while remaining relevant? Um, if this content encourages you, please consider sharing it with someone. And otherwise, we really, really appreciate your support. It means a ton to us. I promise you, if you stick around and help share this content, I will work tirelessly, we will work tirelessly uh, to bring you content that will help you to live faithfully for Jesus outside the church. All right, talk to you next time. Peace.